The fear of more money. If you've been trying to improve your financial situation and you just are not making any progress, almost without exception, you've got this fear and you don't even know it. I had this fear when I first got started and I didn't know it and it wasn't until a mentor introduced this to me and I first was very skeptic that I finally discovered that yes, I had it. I had a broke mentality. I had a poverty mentality. I had a fear of more money. And for a lot of people that watch my videos, they're trying to make a financial difference in their lives, but they're just not getting anywhere. And although this isn't the only problem, this is usually an underlying huge problem. Why am I bringing this up right now? Because I just got reminded of this principle by a a, an apprentice I just brought into the, uh, my program in Arizona and um, there's a deal that following exactly what I taught him to do he found it and he's got it uh, working and it could make upwards of eighty thousand dollars yes eighty thousand dollars first deal working with it and um, this is what he wrote to me Phil I appreciate you calming me down I never thought that the prospect of making a nice amount of money would scare me less but I am I'm going to do exactly what you tell me on this deal, though, because I'm losing my mind over here. Losing his mind? What? How could more money be a problem, right? It's a huge problem in people's subconscious mind. I'm glad this particular apprentice was able to communicate this and verbalize it. Most people don't even realize they're dealing with it. So let's explain how that's possible and then we'll talk more about how to determine if you have it and then what the cure is. Okay, I'm going to draw a thermometer. Old school thermometer, not a digital one. <laughs> and have you ever seen how an air conditioning system works? They have a thermometer, or they call it a thermostat. And you set the thermostat at the amount that you want that room to have as far as the temperature. So we're going to say 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And for those of you that are on Celsius around the world, I don't know what that is, Celsius. And the way an air conditioning works is if the temperature in the air is down in this range, the AC never kicks on because it hadn't hit 72 yet. Hadn't kicked on, hadn't kicked on, hadn't kicked on, hadn't kicked on. Boom! As soon as the air temperature goes above 72, the AC kicks on, and the job of the AC system is to bring the air back down to 72. Okay. Now, when it comes to the fear of more money, people have this in reverse. So what they do is this. They don't realize it, but they have a number in mind. And they may have gotten used to it over time. They grew into it over time as far as the cost of their housing and car and food. And so maybe they're set at $40,000 a year. Maybe they can live off that. They're not happy with it, but they can live off it. And they set this in their subconscious mind as their thermostat level of where they need to be. Now, if they lose their job, something happens and they go below this, you know what they do? They kick on. They, they, they do whatever they got to do, get a second job. They do whatever they got to do, and they make the money. But once they hit here, eh, they stop, slow down, they stop. I can prove this. So researchers at IBM did this many years ago. They took people who were making $40,000 a year because everyone was complaining that they were overworked and underpaid. And so they said, all right, fine, fine, fine. We'll pay you more money. So what they did was, without any reason, they, the, the people weren't actually working harder or doing anything special to perceive a promotion, they just bumped them up to $50,000 a year. Okay. And they were going to see what happened. They would figure, okay, if we pay them more money, they're probably going to work harder because they're so thankful that we're, we're helping them. And so it's kind of like, you know, you give, you get, and this will be great. No, that's not what happened. So... These people, many of them, not all of them, but many of them had this $40,000 mentality. But now they were making $50,000. So here's what they did. The money goes up to $50,000. But they're a $40,000 person. So they don't show up to work as much. They skip work. They're not working as hard. They work about 15% less 
because they want to get down to $40,000 a year. This doesn't make logical sense, does it? This is so irrational, isn't it? It's exactly what happened. In fact, somebody did a recent test on this um, in a different company, and it, it shut their whole company down. They thought it would be smart to just give everybody the same amount of money. Kind of a different principle, but some of it's the same. Okay, so why is this happening? Why do we have this threshold? And you probably have it. You can just look at your, your IRS tax returns for the last several years, and if they're all about the same, there's probably a reason. If, again, you've been trying to increase your financial life. If you haven't, if you've had no interest in money, then it, that's a different story. What's happening is this. You have an association with money. We all do, okay? So we, and, and an association means that, that something is linking in your brain to money, okay? And that association is dictating your relationship, your emotions, everything that's tied to money. And so your association is probably the following. Some money is okay, but too much money is a problem. And you might be thinking, Phil, no, I, I, don't, I don't think that way at all. I know what you're saying. But look, I've been mentoring and training people for many, many years. I've seen this. Just like that individual in Arizona. By the way, I don't have this fear, so even if he does it, I, I, when you work with me, we still get paid, even if they got the fear. So... What's going to happen is, it's at the point where you start to recognize you're going to go from 40 to maybe 80 or 100 or 200 grand, that things start to change. Because deep down, and it may have come from childhood, you have associated something negative or more than one thing negative with more money. And that's where the fear is coming from. So maybe more money equals more problems. That song by Notorious B.I.G., Mo money, mo problems. Maybe those problems are more responsibility. Maybe uh, your friends won't like you anymore because you're rich and they're not. Um, maybe growing up, you, you, your parents used to use phrases like filthy rich and money doesn't grow on trees and, and we can't afford that. And so it, there is this, you, you, you got trained in your brain that you can make a certain amount of money and that's okay, but too much, uh, no, too much is a problem. So um, I know for those that uh, read the Bible, they think of the, the love of money as the root of evil. Okay, and great. And I'm, in this video, I'm not going to talk about the love of money. I'm going to talk about the healthy relationship with money. And that is that there is there shouldn't be a whole lot of negative associations you have with more money. In fact, there should be a lot of positives, if we're thinking rational and clearly here. Because more money could equal blessing others. Blessing others feels great. More money could be more choices. More, more freedom. You think of all these things that more money could bring. The problem is, subconsciously, you locked into your brain negative associations to this thing right here. So what you're thinking in terms of, on a subconscious level, is all the problems more money could give. Filthy rich, you're going to turn bad because now you got all this money. Uh, it, it's just complete nonsense. I had it, most of the people I work with have it, because we're all kind of starting from this low level so we're trying to go up but then there are other people that don't have this and they seem to never even experience this problem because maybe growing up they didn't have that issue you know i see so often where people get angry about others wealth and i just don't get it I, I i read these these comments people say things like get this oh that just makes me sick how rich he is Wh what why would you feel sick to your stomach about that? Because the other person's successful. That's a negative association to money. And you know, we've seen this on a grand scale when someone wins the lottery. I don't know if you know this or not, but the vast majority of lottery winners within a couple of years are flat broke. They win a million, 10 million, it doesn't matter how much they win. If they take the lump sum as opposed to the yearly amount, they're broke. Uh, get this, most professional athletes by the, I think it's like someone that runs of five years after their playing days are flat broke, like 75% of them. 75%. It's because they're making all that money when they're young and they have the fear of more money. They got a broke mentality. So what needs to happen here is we need to associate positive things with more money. And when you do that, you can start to rewrite the script in your brain and that will help you stop the self-sabotage, which is ultimately what's causing the problem here, is the self-sabotage. You're getting in your own way, and you don't realize you're doing it 
but you're doing it because ultimately you're scared of making more money. Just like my apprentice here who said he was scared. Beepless. Okay, what are some positive emotions? We've already talked about some of them. I'll tell you some things that I've, I had to do when I was first getting started. I had to write down a list. My mentor made me write down a list of all the great things that can occur by having excess, lots and lots of money. Not that I'm in love with money, but there's all the great things that can occur as a result of me being the manager of lots and lots of money. Me being the one that's handling those. And I thought of things like this. You know, I'm always trying to grow in all of the different facets of my life. I'm trying to get in better shape. I'm, I'm trying to be uh, just altogether more knowledge. Um, now, of course, uh, that I'm, I'm married with kids, this was when I started this list, it was before then, but I want to be a better husband, better father. You know, I want to be uh, just a, a better son to my parents. I want to be a better grand son to my, to my grandparents. I want to be a better person all around. So if I'm striving to be better in all those different facets, I should also be striving to be better in my finances at all times. I shouldn't always be trying to get back down to here. I shouldn't always, once I have a little bit of money in my pocket, be blowing it. I should always be trying to grow and develop. That was an association I made. I made the association that more, more money can be more freedom. It can be more choices. It can make my life more efficient. I'm always trying to be more efficient because if I'm sitting there searching, searching, searching for the cheapest, cheapest deal, then ultimately it's wasting more time than if I just look to find the best item, whether it's the best refrigerator or, or the best car so that I'm no longer having to juggle the issue associated with everything breaking down all the time. So that's how you cure this. You need to start linking in your mind positive emotions to more money. This will overcome your fear of more money. And so you won't be seeing things like more money, more problems. You'll be seeing things like this. I don't know what they want from me. It's like the more money we come across, the more freedom we see. All right, I'm, I'm sorry I did that. I, I don't even know where that came from. I'm Phil Pustiofsky with FreedomMentor.com. I hope I helped you overcome your fear of more money. And if it doesn't happen today, maybe it'll happen over time. And uh, if that last little piece, you don't want to watch any more of my videos now, I get it. But hopefully you're going to have more money, more freedom. I'm out.